Hey guys, uh, welcome to the 2022 Science Olympiad Season 4 uh, Reflection Relay. Um, very exciting times. Uh, this event used to be um, part of the Science Olympiad uh, and it got removed, I think it's been almost three years now since it's actually uh, been back on the docket. So um, I have kind of a tendency to talk fast. So I made an iMovie uh, to hopefully get the consistent message across. And I'm gonna share the screen, share my screen and uh, get that going here in a second. Um, it's about a 10 minute video. And then, uh, so if you have any questions, just write them down or take notes on them. And then after the video, then we can open up the floor and uh, we'll have a probably a, a also a good discussion. Let's talk about the law of reflection. A mirror has a normal line. This will be considered like zero degrees. You have an incident angle, which is a light coming into the mirror, and you have the reflected angle, which is a light leaving the mirror. These two angles are measured off of the normal line, and they must equal each other. Let's talk about the anatomy of a mirror. I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here. With a mirror, there is a reflective side. In the old days, it was silver. The top side is covered with glass, a protective coating. When you're dealing with the incident angle and the reflective angle, trying to figure out the actual angles off of the normal line, you have to take into account the thickness, minute as it may be, of the glass. This is the reflective part on this side, and then the glass portion, which is up on top. So the light actually reflects from the very tip here, goes all the way through that glass. Let's talk about the tabletop portion. For the tabletop portion, the students will be provided four of these mirrors that are mounted on blocks that they can place anywhere on the table, not just on the white piece of paper. The white piece of paper measures one and a half feet by three feet. This work area is where the students can write, can draw lines to take that laser path with the laser being off, place the mirrors and figure out the angles to get to the target somewhere taped off of the working white paper. The students can bring any materials they want in to help them, but they cannot bring a light source. These mirrors, which are mounted to the wooden block, have a little center mark on them so the students know exactly where the center of that mirror is. These protractors I printed up on a transparency will not be provided, but you, your team can provide them if that would help them. The only marking that's gonna be on the paper is a six inch line that shows the path that the laser is gonna take. It's six inches from the base of the laser. All these other markings are just for demonstration purposes that I have on the paper right now. The students are gonna have five minutes to set up the table how they want to reflect that laser. Using that white piece of paper, they can draw lines to figure out their angles to reflect that laser off of the mirrors. The more mirrors they hit, the better it is for the score. The mirrors don't have to be on the playing field. They can be off the playing field too. After the five minutes, the students will step away from the table and a judge is gonna come by and use this white piece of paper to figure out how many mirrors the laser is reflecting off of. 
let me turn the lights off and I'll show you how that works. So here we can see one, two, three mirrors coming over to the fourth. Yep, hits the fourth mirror and then goes to the target. So I'm going to turn the lights back on and let's talk about the target for a second. The target's going to be taped down. Let's talk about the scoring on the target. I guess it can best be described as a multiplier. If we look closely here, so right now the laser's in the bullseye portion, so the highest multiplier. Now it's in the lower multiplier. So this entire center portion is the higher multiplier. If it's on the line, we're going to give it the higher score. Even if it's barely on the target, it's still on the target, so you'll get the lower multiplier. You don't get any extra bonuses for being right in the very center. Sometimes there will be an obstacle on the course. The more mirrors you hit, the better it is for your score. If you hit one mirror and then hit the target, you'll get one point. Depending upon where you hit on the target, that's your multiplier. So if you were to hit two mirrors, then you will get th only three points for the mult and then have the multiplier. So if it's on the outside of that target, your multiplier is four. If it's on the inside of that target, your multiplier is six. If you hit three mirrors, you get six points times your multiplier. If you get four mirrors, you got 10 points times your multiplier. You can achieve points without hitting the target. You just won't get that multiplier. All right, let's move on to the 3D portion. When the students enter the room, they'll see a protractor on the floor. It's an 80 centimeter radius protractor. They're not allowed to touch it, stand on it. That's gonna be just below where a stationary mirror is located. The students will be given three handheld mirrors. The fourth mirror will be located just above the protractor. That mirror height will be either at the flashlight level, six inches below or six inches above. Only one mirror will be visible. The light source will be a flashlight, a mag light style flashlight with a focusable beam. This is a 3D cell mag light. Somewhere in the room will be a red target and a green target. I'm going to ask the teams who the team leader is. That person will be the spokesperson. The team will be given one minute to set up their positioning with the flashlight being off. If the team is able to set up before that one minute has expired, the team leader needs to announce, we are all set or something to that effect. We're gonna stop the stopwatch and record that time. That time will be used for a tiebreaker. Once the students are all set, then we're going to turn off the lights in the classroom. It gets very, very dark. Make sure your students are prepared for that. At this point, we're going to read some instructions and the judge is going to turn the flashlight on and start the stopwatches at the same time. The team will have a total of one minute to reflect the light off of all four mirrors. And hopefully be on target. 
they have to stay on the target for a total of three seconds. If they come off the target, then the time will, the three seconds will start all over. Once they're on the target for three seconds, we'll go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. We'll stop the time and record it. This process will be repeated for the green target. That time will also be recorded and the two times will be averaged together for your score. For the tabletop portion, every team will start out with 60 points. Depending upon the number of mirrors and your target value, the multiplier, it's gonna be figured out either zero to 60 points will be subtracted from 60. For the 3D part, your two scores will be averaged together and that will be added onto your 2D score. So the score ranges total would be three to 120. The lower the score, the better. Okay, so a uh, couple of things. Um, reflection relay, it must be three students. Um, because of the number of mirrors that we're using uh, for the 3D portion, you have to have uh, three students with you. Um, the students for each, for both the tabletop and the um, 3D portion, they can bring anything they want to help them. Um, with the exception of a light source. Um, when I asked about uh, the team leader being identified, um, we want as uh, judges, we need to know who is what mirror. So who's the first mirror that that uh, flashlight is gonna reflect off of? Who's the second mirror? Who's the third mirror? And who's the fourth mirror? One of those mirrors, one of the four, has to be the stationary. So the team leader needs to be able to identify uh, this person's the first mirror, then it's going to go to the stationary mirror, then it's going to come to the, the next mirror over here, which is Jane, and the, the fourth mirror is going to be Bill type of thing. Um, we will allow spectators of your choosing um, in for the 3D part, uh, but you have to be able, the, the spectators will have to be silent um, because it is, we do get input from the students um, and ask them questions, um, but it is a very neat, uh, it's a very neat subject for your teammates to watch. It builds a lot of camaraderie. Um, with regard to the obstacle on the 2D portion, uh, that cannot be moved. Um, the other things that cannot be moved are the target and the laser. Uh, the four mirrors uh, on wooden blocks that you have, those obviously can be moved and have to be moved to be able to uh, reflect that laser from the source to the target. Okay, I'm gonna open up for questions. It's a lot of information, I know. Mike, this is Ruth Cummins. <clears throat> um, for the rest of the people, I used to be the uh, um, event supervisor for Reflection Relay, and there's just a couple things I'd like to bring up. Uh, you mentioned that the center mark on the mirror will be marked, and I don't think that's going to be true if on like the more recent kits that have been bought, uh, the head coach or the coach for Reflection Relay may need to mark that center mirror themselves, the center of the mirror themselves. Also, um, it needs to be clear that on the tabletop version, the two dimension version, uh, the kids do not turn on the laser. Um, because that is a tendency for the kids to want to turn the laser on themselves. Um, also for the tabletop version, 
the newer targets, I, I looked at the target in your video, which that video was great, by the way. Um, the, you have an older target because you've been coaching this for a long time. The newer targets do not have points on them. And I don't remember if it says times four or times six or, or whatever, but the newer targets are a little bit more updated. It's the same thing, the same amount of space. It's just um, uh, worded differently. Um, are, are the new targets also uh, quartered? Yes, yeah, and it's the same size of sections on there. It's just labeled differently. Um, your, for the three dimension part, you showed that flashlight and you did say it was an uh it was a uh mag light flashlight but you have to make sure you don't have the led version of that flashlight because i don't believe they are focusable and you need to be able to focus the light so uh you know i as far as i know you can't focus an led flashlight and then the last note that I put down is you talked about spectators, which hopefully we will have spectators at the county. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to have spectators at the district tournaments. And that's just a COVID problem, being that those um, uh, district tournaments are going to be in March. Maybe COVID will miraculously be gone by then. I'm hoping so. But it's possible there may not be spectators at the district tournament. We'll have to see what happens with COVID. I'm done. Excellent. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. I appreciate all that. And yeah, we can keep our fingers crossed about the, the COVID restrictions, um, even at the county level when we have the uh, final tournament, so. Oh, I have a question. Um, about the uh, uh, the new target, it's labeled as zone one, zone two, and zone two and zone one. So as you mentioned, that is one side is the lower um, lower side of the uh, multiply multiplication and the higher side of the multiplication on the points wise. So is the zone one in the new target is the same on both and is a zone one and the middle is zone two. Uh, correct. So zone one would be your four times multiplier, and then the zone two would be the the higher multiplier, which is the six. So correct. You kind of view it as as a as a bullseye type of thing. Okay, but uh, zone one is in the both ends yep. of the so, target, so correct. it's not because like going from lower to higher side. That as as your video was showing. Um, so I was just trying to make sure when we teach the kids, you know, I wanted to make sure that it's not lower to higher side. It's just either in zone one or either in middle of the two middles are in zone two. Uh, correct. So, you know, okay. So let's talk about being on bullseye, which is in the very center of the target. That's going to be zone two going out from that one inch in each direction. You're still in zone two then there's that divider between zone one and zone two. So now you're outside of the targets are your zone one. And that's also, I believe, another inch on each side, so. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Are there any questions in the online or on the chat portion of it? Yeah, there's a couple of questions in the chat portion there. So OK, I'm going to try to switch to see where that is. I have one more question. Sorry about the same target thing. Yeah, um, go ahead. In the video, it was showing the on the line, like you have to hit the line that you are marking the line between zone one and zone two. So when you hit the line, that you get more points or you need to just between the like either a zone two side or zone one side so um co correct so i i know exactly what you're talking about um if you're on the line it, i will will bump it up to the higher score value 
So you don't get bonuses for being on that line, but we'll just, we'll give you the, the higher score points for that. Okay, so, okay, I understand. Thank you. Mike, right, there is um, a, there's a question from Sarah. Is there also a written portion, paper portion to the test? Okay, uh, no, there is not. Um, I guess the only paper portion is the uh, is the desktop portion where the kids can draw all their lines um, on that, but there is no written portion. Um, and also I see the question uh, with regard to the flashlight holder. Um, so the, the flashlight holder itself is it is not a particular size. Um, we just have. We just have that right now, and it can be at any level, so it could be on the floor um, or it could be up on a high bookshelf. Um, but the mirror, the stationary mirror has to be at that same height of the flashlight plus or minus six inches. Um, Potts, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It's easier to talk. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Um, are they are both are the kids able to participate in both events? I had heard that if they don't hit the target on the three D, that they don't get to do the tabletop portion. Is that correct? Uh, that is incorrect. Um, they would still be able to participate in in both sections. And as us as coaches, are we allowed to help the kids and talk them through what they're doing and correct them? Or is this something that they can, they'll be able to do all on their own and that there's no feedback from the coaches? During, um, the during yeah, during the event, there's no feedback from coaches. Um, during the practice, it, absolutely, there, there's, you can, you know, when you're practicing, when you're teaching your kids, yeah, you just, stop and, and help moving them around and, and teaching them all that. But no, during the event itself and also during the practice tournaments, there's no outside help from the coaches. Yeah, that is that is correct. And uh, actually that applies to all our events. The ones the kids, whether they are open events or closed event, right? Some of them are closed and of course, like A for Anatomy, they will take the kids from you at the door, you won't even get to see the setup that's inside. They will usher the kids in from one door and then they will tell you which door they will be coming out of when they are done. And so those are closed event and there is no chance of helping them. But even in the open events, let's, let's make this very clear. This is about kids. This is not Whatever coaching that needs to be done should be done ahead of time. When they come in for the tournament, it's all about kids. So for an example, I am heavily involved with water bottle rocket. If the kids come in with a built rocket, and let's say a piece broke, they didn't handle it, they fell on it, something happened and a piece broke. I ask all the parents, if I was coaching, they will have a little toolkit with them and they will be the ones fixing it. At that point, kids can check back out and go back to the coaches and say, let's rebuild this. So all the events are, once the kids come into the tournament, it's all about kids, no parental coaching, even open events like ping pong propulsion, right? where you are allowed to go and watch the event, no coaching is allowed. Any other question? Um, yeah, there were there were two more questions in the online portion um, or the chat line. Uh, one question was um, the setup for the tabletop portion. Will it be identical to that for the competition? No, it won't. Um, most certainly the laser and the target will be taped off of the um, the white little uh, three foot by one and a half foot piece of paper. Um, most certainly, I can guarantee that 
the laser and the target will be taped down and secured to the tabletop off of that paper. Um, the if an obstacle is going to be used for the competition, it's going to be the same on every piece of paper um, and that can it will be movable, but the students are not allowed to move it. Um, the other question was with regard to um, something that the the coaches had to sign up for for the tournament day. I'm not familiar with this. I thought on the competition day that schedule has already been published. Um, I have not looked closely at that to see if there is a sign up portion. Um, there should I, I don't think that there is a, a sign up portion, but yeah, it, it doesn't um, have time for the individual teams. It just says a range i think it's from 10 a.m to uh, 4 p.m and it says coach's discretion or something like that so okay um, awesome so um i guess i so I, so mike i think what's going to happen is the head coach will have to sign up for uh two or three events that need uh they need to figure out what time the kids are going to be co uh, be competing and <clears throat> they'll be able to sign up for that just prior to the tournament. OK. And, and Ruth, do you know where they sign up for that? Um, uh, that... I believe. That I'm looking at the looking at it right now, I believe they will. Um, It'll be online ahead of time. You'll get an email or the head coach will get an email saying, OK, here's here's the site where you can go to sign up for your event. So Manish, right. do I have that correct? Yes, you do. They will they will get an email. So the way I would I would put it, it is the head coach would know that the kids that are participating in Reflection Relay have a commitment at, let's say for an example, use the round number at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 11.30, right? And the head coach would figure out what are the common times that are open for all three kids. And there will be more than, more than a couple slots that are open for you, and then you will sign up for that. Yeah, perfect, thank you. I think Van has a question. Yeah, yes, yeah, I I have a question regarding the the laser that used for the 2D event. Is it going to be this the same or similar laser that going to use for the competition? Because I noticed when I when I use the laser, uh, when I try to use the kit at home, it's very it's faded. It's very light. It's really hard to see when they hit the third or fourth mirror. Huh, interesting. So, so if yeah, if if you're in a room that is pretty bright, that laser does fade out pretty quickly. I mean, in the video, um, I turned all the lights off in, in the room that we were in and it was very dark and there was no question where that laser was. A um, couple things that you may want to try is making sure that the tip of the laser is clean. Just use a cotton ball with a uh, rubbing alcohol on it and then you might need to get new batteries for it for the laser, that that could be it. Um, one thing that uh, we do on competition day, and if you've played around with the kit that you have, you can manipulate the vertical and the, the angle that that laser is. So uh, for you guys for practicing, put that, take your target, which is not taped down for your practices, and put it right in front of that laser. And just now you manipulate that little aperture to make sure that you're perfectly vertical on the target. Once it's vertical up close, it should be perfectly vertical the further away that you reflect it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So I, I'll try it in a little bit darker room, see how that goes. Michelle had a question about a workshop for reflection relay and Michelle, what we did is at the um, head coach meeting back in I think 
the end of October, I think it was, we asked, we polled the uh, the head coaches to see which events were the higher priority for uh, running workshops and uh, Crime Busters, Code Warriors and Rock Hounds were the, uh, the, the priorities. But the nice thing is this uh, workshop right now is being videotaped and you'll be able to rerun that and watch Mike's video and it's like having that workshop all over again. So uh, this is going to be very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure a lot Perfect. of you guys are new here. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, and if you go to the website page, you will see it's in quite a few places. You know, sometimes it's a flashing flashing sign that says, you know, watch our YouTube channel. There is a whole bunch of videos. Some of them are a little bit older uh, that may pertain to different rules, but you should be able to get a lot more out of those videos as well along with this coaching session and all that is available to you 24 hours a day. Um, also on the Macomb website, uh, you can go to a frequently asked questions and any questions that are received, uh, we don't respond specifically to that one person that sent us that email. We will publish that question and then publish our answer that way everybody is on the same page um, with regard to questions and answers. Um, and we are having practice tournaments. Uh, I plan on, on being at all of those. And uh, that's a good um, kind of way for your team to feel how it is gonna be on the actual competition day. And they'll get the results right away on that. They won't be able to go to all of them. They can only go to their district tournament. There are correct. correct. Something else that uh, I just thought of too with the, the tabletop two dimension version, um, the paper there is for everybody to use and different teams use it in different ways. Some people, some teams, you know, write on the paper, other people tape things to the paper, uh, you know, they bring uh, straight sticks, they bring string to mark their uh, the path that they want the light to go. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Uh, and writing on the paper is one possible way to do it. And then that paper gets replaced after every T. So it's a fresh sheet of paper um, for everybody. Clean slate. Any other questions? Thanks for taking over Reflection Relay, Mike. I, I can see this, this event is in really good hands. Good, well, I appreciate you having my back and uh, backing me up too, because we could all use some help. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for coming.